do you prioritize which features to be tested first? That is the interview questions. So how will you answer this question? What is your way of prioritizing uh, which test cases to be executed for a given feature? That is the interview question. How will you answer? Here we should look on assessing the risk for a given feature to see how that feature is important, how feature that is critical, whether we wanted to take up those test cases first or not. That is the kind of assessment we should perform. And again, second one is we should also see what is the value which is bringing to the business. If the that feature is having a higher business value, definitely we should pick up those tests because that would going to generate higher business value, higher return of investment for the customer and again that would help us to get more customer satisfaction as well. And the third one is again dependencies if it is there, if there is a multiple dependencies on that given feature, then we should take those features at the earliest because if you are not testing that feature, because this feature is having a lot of dependencies to the other features they are, which they are going to implement in future, even those aspects also we should look into that. And the fourth one is again the schedule, release schedule. If you have enough time then we can go and pick up uh, most of the test cases. If uh, release schedule is very tight then uh, we should uh, look into the previous criteria to pick the which test cases to be executed uh, earlier. Again customer feedback. If a customer is coming and saying that for them this feature is very important then we should go and address uh, those customer uh, issues. Again in order to test any functionality we should have enough test data inputs and outputs. If you are not able to test at all then definitely that is not worth checking first. If you have enough uh, inputs, outputs and we clearly know what is expected behavior then we should pick those test cases as well. Apart from that, uh, whatever we just talk about, we should also look on the overall test strategy, objectives and criticality or complex in the scenarios or features that is going to potentially impact the client or customer. Then we should pick up all those test cases as early as possible in order to prioritize those test cases for your execution. How do you determine the appropriate test data to use for your test? So what is a way we will be using this different mechanism to identify the right set of test data. Test data is very crucial to test any application. How will you put a right planning or right technique to bring the right test data for your test execution? The first one is you have to understand your requirements, specification, user stories. That is the number one uh, stuff you should do. And the second one is the edge cases are boundary conditions by following various uh, testing mechanism, testing techniques like boundary value analysis, equivalence partitioning, various mechanisms. You should also come up with the different uh, test data to test the your uh, testing features. You should also look for uh, realistic data. Uh, almost similar to the production how people really use in the real scenarios. You should also bring those perspective also in your test data. And uh, fourth one is again uh, we should put uh, different combinations of test data by considering various uh, numerical uh, text uh, date boolean so that uh, we will be covering uh, to ensure that uh, your application still is able to take what it is supposed to take. not. Uh, different thing or it should not throw any exception, it should not throw any error messages if I am uh, selecting a different uh, data types altogether. Then the fifth one is uh, again size of the data as well uh, by considering small data, medium data, large data. Maybe if I try to say I will add up a big uh, large data maybe 10 digit big number, it may fail. If I just select 6 digit number or 2 digit number, your application may work. Again, based on your requirement, we have to select all these different combination to ensure that your application really works as expected. Then the sixth uh, type of uh, test data we should see is different uh, forms. 
you should uh, put the data in a different formats like csv format json format excel format xml format we should uh, bring the test data from all this format and we should put into your application by testing uh, by all this format we wanted to see your application still behaves as expected and the seventh one is again uh, uh, multiple languages if it is supported then uh, you should bring the test data uh, by considering different languages as well like Chinese language, Hindi language, English language, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, Tamil like by looking different languages will have a different uh, set of data will be there so we should include based on the the kind of uh, languages which you are going to test and the eighth one is again we just consider all possible scenarios we should also consider the invalid data as well uh, to cover uh, as part of your test data where you should cover all the negative parts invalid data so that uh, that would also guarantee that uh, your uh, application is behaving as expected apart from that we should also consider while using the test data we should also look for uh, regulations of uh, data sensitivity and data regulation data protection of end users everything we should keep in mind while we are trying to adapt to pick the test data for your application how will we answer the interview question how do you determine what test cases to include in your overall test suit this is very important question normally it will be asked in most of the interview question to assess how will you or what strategy you will follow to identify the test cases which are needed to test for a given feature or test for certain software first we should consider whenever we wanted to determine or identify the test cases first we should understand the what are the functionality of a given feature or an application where you should include all your positive negative scenarios edge cases boundary conditions all these things we should uh, cover as part of uh, your overall uh, testing journey you have to include these test cases functional test cases into your test suit and the usable perspective as well usability perspective usability perspective also you should include as part of your testing where uh, we will be looking in terms of ease of use of the application all those aspects and uh, compatibility issues as well we should test where uh, we will be accessing the application on multiple browsers multiple operating systems multiple mobile devices everywhere and we wanted to see our application our features are working without having any challenges these type of test cases also you should include as part of your testing and the four type of uh, test cases we should also look in terms of performance topics where uh, we should see the loading uh, time, response time, different conditions of performance as per the performance requirement. We should cover those aspects as well. And uh, security related uh, issues also we should cover as part of your uh, test suit and uh, any compliances because some of the uh, projects may have banking projects may have banking compliances regulatory compliances healthcare systems will have different regulation compliance or standards industry standards you should cover everything as part of your test cases coverage as well and uh, apart from that uh, if there is any specific requirements or constraint uh, in your project like accessibility testing or localization accessibility testing is like uh, uh, people can access blind people can access or um, other uh, handicapped people can access your application still uh, you should be able to provide access to different uh, disabled people as well we should test as part of accessibility test case in case your application is exposed for blind people as well or disabled people as well and localization testing again uh, if the application is exposed for different languages then you should uh, test this localization testing as well this is how we should uh, convey your messages to the interviewer that these are the approaches at least these are the basic approach which i normally choose while picking the test cases and including uh, as part of my overall uh, test suit so how do you ensure that your tests are comprehensive and cover all possible scenarios because you have done an exercise of uh, what are the test cases you will be identifying and what are the things you are going to execute as part of uh, testing a new feature 
or a new software, then how will you guarantee that whatever is picked is having a comprehensive and it covers all possible combinations or all possible scenarios? That is the question here. How will you answer this question is, we should use various uh, testing technique also to come up with a uh, comprehensive or possible scenarios. The first one is risk based testing. Here we will be picking the test cases by considering to the risk into the matter by considering uh, what are the risks if I am not going to pick up those test cases. For every test cases we should put a risk meter or risk parameter so that uh, if anything uh, we are marked as a higher risk then we should pick those test cases part of our test execution. Then uh, you should also look for a boundary value analysis uh, where uh, we wanted to test for all different combinations of uh, input and output values with the different uh, edge cases with the extreme conditions. That is also guarantee that we are going to cover all possible scenarios and also if you use equivalence partitioning by dividing the various inputs and output values into different partitions so that only we will be picking up small uh, portion of that uh, sample or partition so that uh, it guarantees that we are going to exude all possible combinations. And uh, fourth is against state transition testing if you follow adopt this technique definitely that is also going to help us to bring a comprehensive uh, test scenarios and pairwise testing again here all possible combinations of input values will be considering while picking the test cases so that this is also going to guarantee uh, that we are going to cover all possible scenarios then sixth one is the model based testing here we are going to generate the test cases based on the model which we created to test that given feature this can be done automatically. Uh, this model based testing test cases will be generated automatically. That would guarantee that we are going to cover all, all possible scenarios. The seventh one is apart from this, whatever we just talked about various different techniques, we should also test uh, or identify by looking at different perspective as well like uh, user point of view or development point of view or security point of view different uh, point of view if you go and validate all those aspects then we should be able to include all those tests also as part of our test scenarios and also as we start uh, bringing these test cases when we are executing we may see different behavior and we should keep adding the new test cases as well or we have to remove some of the test cases as well based on our experience in testing all the previous uh, phases this is how we should manage to ensure we we'll bring the lot of compromising or uh, possible scenarios as part of our testing. How do you evaluate the effectiveness of your overall uh, testing process? Is there any mechanism? Is there any matrix? How do you ensure that whatever the process which we define is very effective? That is the question here. Then how will you answer this question? So in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the overall testing process, then we would be required lot of metrics as well to that would guarantee that we have a right set of uh, testing process we have. First uh, matrix we should cover is test coverage. The test coverage is the first matrix uh, we should consider that would guarantee the effectiveness of our overall testing processes. More the coverage than the good process you are bringing here. And the second one is the defect density. This matrix measures number of uh, defects found per unit code or functionality. If, if you are seeing uh, for a given feature, if you are seeing a lower density where less number of defects we have, we can easily assume that we have enough test coverage uh, for that given feature. And the third one is bug detection rate. If we are uh, able to find more defects, more issues on a particular feature, that means uh, that code is not up to the mark and uh, even we can guarantee that uh, number of test cases which we are bringing uh, for that kind of features we have a good uh, quality as well because we are able to find more issues uh, uh, in a given feature. Then the fourth one is uh, time to detect. 
when this feature is implemented and when the issue is got detected the shorter the time indicates defects are found as early as possible in the development process let's say if the defect is found in the later in the game that means there is a lack of testing process here we have not brought the right testing process because we are uh, only catching the issues in the later in the game if you are able to catch early in the game then we can easily say we have effectiveness uh, in your testing process then the fifth one is time to fix after we identifying the issue how much time has been taken to fix those issue also matters because if developer is not able to fix the issues in the early in the system even tester if you identify the issues is also of no use because after that lot of regression issues also will come up uh, if you are not fixing the things as well as possible. This is also a matrix. We should try to adapt to bring the effectiveness uh, in, terms of, in terms of our testing processes. And the sixth one is return of investment. This matrix uh, uh, gives uh, how much cost we have invested uh, in the testing process to find uh, the defects and as well as fixing it. The more the return of investment that means uh, testing process are very effective here. And the seventh uh, aspect we have to look at here is customer satisfaction. This me matrix measure the satisfaction of the end user or customer with the feature. The higher the customer satisfaction we have that means we have higher uh, effective testing process in your testing project and the eighth one is pass or fail rate this matrix uh, measure the ratio of successful test versus fail the higher the pass rate indicates we have good number of uh, good amount of uh, effective testing processes apart from that uh, uh, whatever the above metrics we should also keep looking any other uh, additional metrics we can bring into the system that would guarantee we can easily measure the overall uh, quality perspective by using various uh, testing metrics in your project. How do you stay up to date with the latest testing tools and technique? This is the interview question. Normally this question will be asked in most of the interview these days just to see what kind of behavior you have, what kind of uh, stuff you have, whether you are able to cope up with the latest technology or latest tools or techniques, how do you manage yourself by having this kind of situation to get the right answer where they are trying to ask this question. So in order to stay up to date in terms of testing tools or technology or anything, then we should keep reading various industry publications or blogs. That would guarantee what is really happening in the industry. It could be your testing industry, insurance industry, banking industry or any other industries in that matter where we should keep reading various documents, articles, publications that would guarantee that what kind of tools they are using, what kind of techniques they are bringing to test effectively so that uh, by looking, uh, reading all these aspects definitely we can uh, keep ourselves uh, up to date in terms of latest technologies, tools, techniques. And the second one is if you are trying to attend the conferences, workshops, even that would give an opportunity for you to understand what are the latest trends we have in the market, what is the latest tools or techniques. And the third one is again if you are trying to join any online community like Facebook community, LinkedIn community or social media groups where uh, there are like-minded people, they are working together and they are trying to bring the latest uh, innovative thought process in that group then obviously everybody will be keep uh, awareness uh, on the latest things happening in that industry. And the fourth one is if you are trying to take up any online courses where they will try to bring in uh, new courses, whatever training courses, whatever with the new tools, even those aspects also will help you to keep you up to date in terms of latest technologies, technique, testing tools, techniques and uh, fifth one is you yourself practicing with the new tools. Once you get an idea what are the tools it is available then you can practice maybe you should uh, take a beta version or you should take a pre-version or trial version. Then you keep practicing uh, those testing tools or uh, techniques and the sixth perspective again if you are working with your colleagues uh, other members in the different companies if you are keep talking to them sharing the knowledge experience even that time also will get an idea on the 
up to date on the latest uh, tools.